Hey guys, in this ceramic crucible a chemical reaction is happening between aluminum and phosphorus, resulting in the formation of aluminum phosphide. This great powder is a highly toxic inorganic compound used as semiconductor in a fumigant. Now, if we add this powder to water, it releases a gas, phosphine, which is extremely flammable. Since this reaction doesn't produce diphosphine, the compound that spontaneously ignites in air, like it does in the magnesium phosphide reaction, everything stays calm for now. But only until we introduce ozone into the system. Phosphine, which normally doesn't ignite in air on its own, bursts into flames instantly when it comes into contact with the ozone. The phosphine gas bubbles pop on the water surface, react with the ozone and form clouds of phosphorus pentoxide smoke. So, for a clear demonstration, I have set up a crystallizer with water right next to my ozone machine. Right now, oxygen is being supplied through this glass tube. Now I'm adding aluminum phosphide to the water, and right after that, I turn on the ozone machine. In about 5 seconds, ozonated oxygen will start flowing through the tube. Watch what happens next. And now let's see what happens if instead of using ozone gas I add liquid ozonated oxygen to the phosphine that's being released. I'm just going to pour a bit of liquefied ozonated oxygen into the flask where the aluminum phosphide is reacting with water. And here we go, the most classic reaction of ozone, an explosion. This little rock here is just regular calcium carbide. When it reacts with water, it releases a flammable gas, acetylene. Interestingly, acetylene and ozone don't get along. But here is the catch – acetylene only reacts violently with liquid ozone, and only when acetylene is in solid form. In its gaseous state, there is no spontaneous ignition. So, I took my ozone machine and brought the tube, the one that releases ozone, close to the solid acetylene. As you can see, nothing's happening. No reaction at all. Now I am going to liquefy the gas and add it to the solid acetylene. Liquid ozonated oxygen has a blue color. The higher the concentration of dissolved ozone, the darker and richer the blue color. On this watch glass, there is a small amount of solid acetylene, and now I'm going to pour some liquid ozonated oxygen onto it. As you saw, when liquid ozone comes into contact with solid acetylene, it explodes. In the next reaction, I'm going to add solid acetylene into a petri dish that I've pre-filled with ozonated oxygen. To slow down the evaporation of ozone, I've added some liquid nitrogen to the dish beforehand, which also helps delay the immediate explosion of acetylene.
It's also interesting that if I add a bit of carbon tetrachloride to vaccinated oxygen, and then after the liquefied gas evaporates, we are left with a blue solution of ozone in carbon tetrachloride, which can also ignite solid acetylene. By the way, the solution reacts much more violently with burning magnesium than regular carbon tetrachloride does. Alright, now let's see what happens when I pour liquid azonated oxygen into a beaker where a calcium carbide is reacting with water. And for a more epic shot, I grabbed a 5-liter flask and a big chunk of carbide. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe to the channel and consider becoming a patron, it helps me buy more expensive chemicals and run even more unique experiments, and huge thanks to all my patrons who are supporting me right now, I truly appreciate your support, you're the reason these experiments are possible, thanks for watching, see you in the next video.